Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Weather or Not. I'm your host, Allison Gutlieber. And I'm your forecaster, Hannah Evans. So, Hannah, what can we expect this weekend in State College? So, there's a chance of rain and snow coming through State College this weekend, but the chance is very low, so I don't think we will be seeing any um, type of dreary weather this weekend. Oh, that's a shame. We won't have any snow. But yeah. Hannah will have that more detailed in her short-range forecast. Also, we have some nature in the news stories. I will be presenting about newly found viruses in glaciers in China, and Hannah will be talking about man-made snow. We also have a feature by Matt Yerosavik on emergency management. But first, with our nature in the news stories. Scientists sampling ice from a glacier in China discovered 28 viruses that had been frozen in time for as long as 15,000 years and were not previously known. As glaciers around the world are beginning to melt, viruses that have been frozen for years will be exposed to the outside world. Scientists are interested to study the unknown fields before the glaciers melt. Observing these viruses can help prevent and prepare for future diseases while also examining the history of Earth's climate. The worst case scenario, according to researchers at The Ohio State University, is the ice fully melting, releasing the pathogens into the environment. While this idea sounds too far-fetched, something similar has happened before. The 2016 anthrax outbreak in Siberia was blamed on a virus from reindeer carcass that had been buried in permafrost for 75 years. While glaciers around the world are melting at unprecedented rates, we hope that scientists can study these newly found viruses before it is too late. Skiing and snowboarding are very popular at this time of year. In fact, I am a big ski fanatic myself. Although we have not received a lot of snow thus far, the mountains always seem to be covered nicely. This is because most of the snow on the mountain is man-made and we are not receiving real snow. You may be wondering, how is the snow made? On the mountain, you may see a machine blowing out snow. This machine is called a snow gun. The snow gun has two hoses attached to it. One is pumping in air from a compressor, and the other is pumping in water from a lake, pond, or reservoir. When air is compressed, the particles are pushed tightly together. It is then released out of the snow gun into the air, and the particles move more freely. This allows the particles to use more energy and will cool the air around the water droplets to create snow. This snow is accumulated in big piles, then they will use their snow grooming machine to evenly disperse the snow. This artificial snow works best because it is easier to ski or snowboard on and it melts slower. Weather in Calabasas, California, early Sunday morning, played a role in the helicopter crash that killed legendary basketball star Kobe Bryant, his daughter, and eight others. Weather in the crash area at the time featured fog and reduced visibility, obscuring hills and raising concern that these conditions played a major role in the accident. Around 8.53 a.m., observations showed light winds, overcast skies, and visibility around four miles. The cloud ceiling was around 1,000 feet, while the temperature was 57 degrees with a dew point of 50, indicating enough atmospheric moisture to generate low cloud cover. The flight left at 9.05 and 15 minutes into the flight, the chopper entered a holding pattern, circling Glendale for another 15 minutes and transitioning into special VFR rules that allowed the pilot to fly by sight. At 9.40, the helicopter began to ascend rapidly, climbing 875 feet in 36 seconds. Rapid lift is a common factor investigators find post-crash. That sudden climb carried the helicopter into a layer of fully saturated air and low visibility. At 9.45, the helicopter made an abrupt turn toward the southwest direction. The 9.51 a.m. weather observation taken at a local airport around the time of the crash recorded the visibility of 2.5 miles with 80% relative humidity and a ceiling of 1,300 feet. Based on all the data and debris pattern, this accident may be an instant of which stable aircraft is flown under controlled conditions into an object or the ground. The low clouds and fog may always been catastrophic to aviators having these accidents occur when pilots are unaware of their proximity to the ground. Our condolences go out to the families of the victims who were involved. 
Scientists are becoming more and more concerned about a new virus that has infected many people in China. The virus is a coronavirus that causes a respiratory illness and can spread from person to person, much like the cold or flu. The United States Center for Disease Control has confirmed that the second person in the United States has been affected with this virus on January 24th. The risk of this virus infecting Americans is low at this time, but may happen within the next couple of weeks. Chinese authorities and scientists are still researching to find what causes this virus and how to prevent it. Updated on January 23rd, this virus has spread to 579 people in China and has caused 17 deaths. Hi everyone, it is Hannah here with your Central PA forecast. We do see that potential of a rain slash snowstorm coming into State College this weekend, but the chance is very low, so it may not hit State College. But for Friday, we have high pressure in control, which means the days have been really nice, temperatures still around average. But as we move into Saturday, we have this low pressure coming up from the south, which this is the pressure system that is in question, bringing that rain slash maybe even some snow. But as as we see, if it gets a little bit closer to the coast, then we could see that chance of rain in State College. But as of right now, we do not see it hitting State College. And going into Sunday, we have this cold front moving in, which brings in colder air. And we may see that lake effect snow coming in from the Great Lakes. And this is when the wind is pushing towards us State College over the lakes. And that warm, moist air from the lakes mixes with the cold air above the lakes and brings um, precipitation into State College. Now going into your weekend recap, we have Friday a high of 39, mostly cloudy, and Friday night is when we see that chance of that low pressure system moving in with a low of 30 and we may potentially see those snow showers. For Saturday we have the high of 41, that chance of rain, maybe even some snow if temperatures do get low enough on Saturday. And for Sunday we have a high of 38, again still that chance of rain slash snow, sh snow showers that are coming in from the lake effect snow. Now here is Matt Yurisavik with your feature on emergency management. It has been a calm and quiet day. All of a sudden the skies darken. A tornado warning is issued. The winds whip up as small hail starts pelting the roof. Winds quickly pick up debris as you hear what sounds like a train roaring outside your window. Minutes later, all is quiet. The area has been hit by a strong tornado that tore a path through town. The response is quick as police, fire, and EMS stream into the area. The key to helping communities to respond to catastrophes like tornadoes and natural disasters is emergency management. Well, an emergency manager is a professional that helps the elected officials in a community, the chief elected officials in a community, or in our case as a university, the executives develop a framework that helps the uh, university respond to and recover from emergencies. In a city or a town setting, the emergency manager will typically report to the mayor or the county commissioners. In a university setting, the emergency manager will work directly with the police and public safety. The emergency managers will typically respond to three different types of events. We look at events um, in three different categories. We look at an incident, which is kind of the day-to-day. -day. It might be a small house fire. It might be a one-car accident. Then we look at emergencies, which are a little bit larger. They take a few more agencies to respond to. It could be a major um, multi-vehicle accident, and you need police, and you need EMS, and you maybe even need fire for extrication. And then we classify the last one as disasters or catastrophes. Those are your things um, that are hopefully only once in a lifetime, if you experience them at all. Uh, they might be the uh, Hurricane Katrina, the World Trade Center, the wildfires out in California right now. 
While different events impact different places around the country, Seoul gave some insight as to what types of weather emergencies happen right here in Pennsylvania. The most likely weather emergencies here are winter storms and um, high winds, severe storms, which, you know, may be a tornado or it may just be straight line winds. Each type of emergency requires a different response, and weather is no exception. So there would be a little bit different response. Um, in a winter, in a tropical storm or a severe storm, we may have first responders like police and fire out, um, EMS trying to, to get to locations and, and help people because they've been injured because of debris or whatever, whereas in a snowstorm, that's typically not the case. In a snowstorm, most people are more comfortable in their own homes, so power outages are the main worry when a cold air mass follows an intense winter storm. These could be handled by coordinating with power companies to get the lights and heat back on, as well as having officials check on the elderly to make sure that they are doing okay. Large events like Penn State football games are the reason why emergency managers are so important. They can help to save lives and keep many thousands of people safe in the event that dangerous weather conditions threaten. It was impactful for the university because we had to delay, delay a football game uh, when the lightning came through and we had to uh, not let pe any more people into the stadium and try to get people into shelters. Lightning, along with many other threats like winds and tornadoes, make headlines the most. But over the past 14 years, there were more deaths related to extreme temperatures and even flooding right here in Pennsylvania. Since 2006, there have been a total of 229 weather-related deaths reported in Pennsylvania, which is an average of about 19 per year. A few ways to get advance notice for local events is to listen to updates through local news, radio stations, or weather radios. There are also ways to get text messages for your community through a program called Code Red. You can head to the website and enter your information to receive emergency alerts directly to your cell phone. This is a major way to stay in touch with what is going on around you. You can also make the emergency manager's job easier by having a plan. People can be prepared and be aware of what's going on. Um, when I say be prepared, I'm talking about having 72 hours worth of food and water for every person and pet in your household. All emergency managers are there to prepare and help their communities in the best way possible. Their job is simple, help to keep the residents of the community out of harm's way when the weather takes a turn for the worse or any other major emergency arises. Um, emergency management is really about um, relationships. It's really about building relationships with the community and making sure that everyone in the community has their needs addressed and knows how to get help and where to get help and is included in the decision-making processes that take place. For whether or not, I'm Matt Yurisavik. Hi everyone, it's Hannah back here with your extended forecast. We may see that chance of precipitation in State College this weekend, but the chance is fairly low, so we may also not see that precipitation this weekend. So into your weekend recap, Friday we have a high of 39, a low of 30, mostly cloudy and gloomy throughout the day. If we do see that precipitation, it will come in late Friday night into Saturday with a high of 40 and a low of 29. If that low pressure system comes close enough to the coast, we will see that chance of rain, maybe even for some snow if the temperatures do go down low enough. And on Sunday, we have a high of 40 and a low of 31. That chance of some rain and maybe even some snow showers from that lake effect snow we may experience on Sunday. Now into your extended forecast, Monday we have a pretty nice day. 
partly cloudy, highs in the upper 40s, but for the rest of the week, Tuesday through Friday, it is going to be a dreary week ahead. We have a lot of precipitation next week compared to this week, but temperatures are above average, so it's going to be a lot warmer than what we have been experiencing, Allison. Thanks, Hannah. So I see that next week we're going to have more wet conditions rather than last week with our dry conditions. Yeah, so this week it was fairly dry, but it was still gloomy. Um, next week it's going to be wet but gloomy, so make sure you do bring an umbrella if you're planning on traveling outside next week. Yes, and we're really trying to look for snow rather than rain precipitation. Yes, and maybe hopefully even some off days of school. Yes, that would be great. So earlier in the show, we asked you a whiz quiz question, which is how many inches of snow has State College received so far this winter season? A, 7.2 inches, B, 9.6 inches, C, 11.4 inches, or D, 14.1 inches and the answer is B 9.6 inches and actually this is a little below average for our winter season in State College. Usually the yearly um, amount for the snow is 11.6 so we're just two inches below average. Yeah which is kind of disappointing. I love the snow and I do want those off days of yes. school. Yes, hopefully we do get them because that would be awesome for Penn State. Yes, crossing my fingers it happens sometime soon. Yes and with that thank you for tuning in to our episode of Weather or Not. I'm your host Allison Gutlieber and I'm your forecaster Hannah Evans. Have a good evening.